Hi everyone and welcome to video number one in the creating a Unity 3D Space Shooter uh, tutorial series. I'm going to try to keep these videos really less than 20 minutes, usually 10 or 15 minutes short, quick and to the point. In the uh, video description down below on YouTube you'll see a Dropbox download link for a Unity package file. It is called Space Shooter Asset Package. When you bring it in this package will contain, um, I'm going to just show you, some art assets. It'll contain a little laser uh, particle effect. It will contain a pretty neat outer space uh, nebulous skybox and a material for our spaceship here, which is just going to be a proxy uh, stand-in spaceship. And then, of course, an audio, uh, an audio clip for the shooting of the spacecraft. So this is Unity 5 um, and if you did not grab the art assets here in that Unity package file in the description it's fine you can do this tutorial without the assets. Um, so in this tutorial what we're gonna do is we're setting up a player camera that will cinematically follow the uh, the uh, player's spaceship around in outer space and I found a video that showed something similar here of this game called Everspace that isn't out yet looks really cool but this is very uh, similar to what we're gonna do with this the way you control your player through outer space and shoot projectiles and um, lock on to enemy AI and the camera following it. Uh, I'm debating whether we're going to do an interior camera or not that may be a video that we attach on uh, later if there are requests for that. Um, <clears throat> so without further ado Let's start setting up this player camera. I'm going to create a folder and call it scripts and I right clicked create folder and in that I'm going to go create C sharp script and I'm just going to call this um, camera script. Okay. I'm going to take our camera here that's already in the scene by default. Click this little gear and reset position and I'm going to call this camera um, player camera. Um, one of the things next I want to do because I have the art asset in here is look for the material skybox. We're going to go window lighting and we're going to go into the real time lighting tab here. We'll just turn off bake GI because we don't need it. And we're going to drag the skybox into the skybox slot here. Then we can close that window. And now you'll see that we have a really cool like uh, galaxy nebula outer space um, skybox. And that's just you know it's not necessary um, it's just cool to have for this so the next thing I'll do is create a uh, simple sphere uh, game object 3d object create a sphere and I'll remove the collider component and I will reset position on the transform okay <clears throat> I'm also going to scale my gizmos up just a little bit so I can see them and then I will back the camera out. I would say five is good and up one is good. So one and Y, negative five and Z. And so it's just behind the player. The sphere is going to represent our player for right now. So we created this camera script. Let's left mouse drag it onto our player camera. We'll double click it to open it up in MonoDevelop. Um, I'm not gonna go into deep into the theory and principles of scripting. I'm going to talk just a little bit about it and uh, just so we can get through this for brevity's sake and get through this quickly. So what we need up here in our class or our script, this is our class camera script, it's our code, um, are some variables and these are just, I think of them as slots or containers or holders of data or information or a component in Unity, a transform, a light, uh, a rigid body and something like that. So you have public and private variables. Um, so we're going to create one and it's going to be called public transform um, target. <clears throat> and I am going to zoom in. I did not forget. My shortcut keys are not working for some odd reason. And so this is a public uh, variable which is a transform component and I just named it target I could have named it um, uh, Barney um, but I named it target because it's a good idea to name your variables 
something that you'll recognize and know later. So now I can drag and drop anything that is a transform component in there. This is actually going to end up being the camera target that's uh, embedded in our player object. Okay, so the next thing we need here is public vector 3 and we'll say distance and we'll say equals um, new vector 3 and 0f, 5f, negative 10f and close it out. A vector 3 is just a point in space. If you look at our little uh, toolbar here, our little bar that we grab, it has z, x, and, and y. That is the vector 3 space. The vector 3 right here, x is that part of the vector, um, the y, and the z. So in our vector 3 we have 0 for x, 5 and 1, and actually looking at where I put the camera, we want that to be 1, and we'll want that to be negative 5. It directly represents that space and world space, vector 3. Um, the next variable we'll want is public um, float and we'll say position dampening. I'm going to just say damping. And we'll say 2f. And so what this is is a float. So it's a floating point number. It can be 2.1999 for very precise values. It could be 0 0.01112. It has, can have a floating decimal point. Whereas um, an integer or an int or a const is a 2, a 1, a 3, a 4, it's a whole number. Um, also the little f that I put behind the 2 also designates that this value is a float value even though we told it that the variable type is float here. It's just a habit of mine to put the f behind it to let these um, let these variables know that um, it is a float. <clears throat> so the next variable we're going to do is another float and we'll call it uh, rotation damping and we'll say that it's also a value of 2f. Um, and then the next variable we're going to do is a new one. It's private. And I'll explain that in a second. It's also going to be a type of transform component. And we'll just call it this transform. And so what this is, is this is uh, privatized. So when we hit Control S and save and go back, all of our public variables show up and we can tweak them in the inspector but the privatized one does not. If I were to make this public it would show up. Private variables are very convenient in that you can hide um, a variable or a piece of data in the inspector so an artist, and I'm not knocking artists because I am an artist, um, won't tweak those values and they can't tweak them from in the inspector and they can't drag and drop something in there accidentally. The script itself, this code right here, is going to manipulate this variable and this data so the the uh, developer never actually is to do that themselves. Okay, so the start um, function or method here um, will activate whatever's inside of these brackets when the scene starts, when you hit the play button. So what we're going to do is take this variable, this transform, as I just said that the script is going to uh, manipulate this data, and we're going to say that this transform is equal to get component transform and that's not supposed to be lowercase, that was just a typo. And so we're telling the script itself, hey, automatically assign this transform the component of transform. So it's going to take the transform component that's right here, that the script is on this object, and it's just going to get that component and assign it into this transform for us. Very nice. So update. This is a method here, or in JavaScript, a function that occurs every single frame continuously of your game. Things like um, a script that's looking for input, or a script that's uh, changing and um, blending between animations, or a script that's controlling a camera like we're doing, will need to occur all the time in update. But there's also another method built in called late update, which occurs after update and fixed update. And we want it to occur last because the camera rendering the scene is the last thing we want to occur. We want to make sure all the physics stuff and all the other things have occurred and that the camera's being moved and manipulated in late update, the very last thing that needs to be moved and updated. So let's ask a question in late update and say, hey, if the target that we want or looking for, if it's equal to null, 
um, then return and then we'll um, we'll leave that as is so what that's saying here is if this target is not assigned and null means unassigned empty zero value it represents a null reference there's nothing there so we didn't drag anything in that target slot when it says none that's pretty much the same thing as null return just means don't go any further down in this function here go back up to the top and start back over again all right and it doesn't allow it to continue on so that's kind of a safety sanity check um, to make sure do we have a target and uh, we're not going to do any following if we don't so we're going to declare another variable inside this function and we're going to it's going to be a vector 3 which you learned when we started here was a position in 3d space it was three vectors x y and z and it literally represents a position in space we're going to say let's create a new vector 3 here and it's going to be equal, it's called wanted position, and it's equal to target position plus um, target dot rotation um, times the distance. And then we'll close that out. The wanted position is just going to be equal to the position of the target where the camera wants to follow plus that target's rotation times the distance that you've set, which is your offset that you personally want. Um, the camera to follow behind the target. So the next one is where we're actually going to say give let's give this uh, camera that's following the current position. Let's make sure it has that current position where we want it to be. And this is going to be a vector 3 position in space but a lerp which sounds funny but is actually pretty cool and I'll explain this in just a second after we uh, type this out. This transform position wanted position and I'm going to squeeze this out a little more um, wanted position um, typo typo <clears throat> position damping times time dot delta time and I I say that funny because you'll find that in your code um, oops you're using time dot delta time oh I see I'm not quite seeing because I got the light skinned unity I'm not quite seeing the edge of mono development there. So a vector 3 lerp is saying let's lerp or linearly interpolate, which just basically means smoothly move between two points. Let's lerp two points in space, vec two vector 3s. Let's take this transform's position, this camera that's got the code on it, let's lerp to the wanted position of the target, and let's lerp over time dot delta time times the damping which is going to be that damping value how smooth how slowly how quickly will it catch up to the wanted position and time dot delta time is just frame rate independence right times the time that's running every frame of the game so um, very simple and then in there after we have these two variables <clears throat> let's just tell this set the transform for this camera and let's actually move it let's do it so this transform position we're going to set the position equals current position. So it's set. Let's do the same thing with the rotation. So quaternion, um, a, we want, I hit the caps lock key, we want wanted rotation equals quaternion look uh, rotation target dot position minus, and we'll explain this in just a second. Okay, we'll just get this typed out. This transform position, target dot up. Okay, so quaternion look rotation. Um, this is pretty cool. So let's um, just bring up, and Google is your friend when it comes to the script documentation in Unity. Um, so quaternion look rotation, it will create a rotation with the specified forward and up direction. A quaternion is just rotations, just like a vector 3 represents a point in space. A quaternion represents a rotation around y, around x, and around z. So it's also a three-dimensional rotation. It mathematically can get a little complicated, um, but look rotation will cause that rotation to have a very specific forward direction and up direction, which is the forward direction will always be the position of the target minus where this position is of this object the camera 
and then target up. The target up is the same thing as writing uh, a vector 3 with a 1 in the y-axis. So target up just says, hey, the vector 3 is up, and this just says it's forward, facing towards the target. And then with the, uh, with the quaternion there, let's just set the rotation, just like we did the position. Transform rotation, and let's just say it equals that wanted rotation. Okay, and hit Control S and save. This is our cinematic camera script. Um, I didn't do any code commenting, so we got through it kind of quick. Um, but normally you would comment by adding two forward slashes, and it will turn gray, and you say, um, allow the script to assign the transform itself or whatever you think uh, is most descriptive so that when you open this script back up in six months because you're working a different job somewhere else because the indie thing isn't paying the bills and you wanted to know what this line of code does this is how you do that anything with the two forward slashes doesn't compile one forward slash won't do the trick so let's save and let's go back and take a look at this and all the values should be good uh, right out of the box except this we want to set that to that and that by the way any values you set here in the inspector override those values in the script so inside of our player objects which player object we're gonna call it player and we're gonna actually right click on it and do create empty and we're gonna call that I like to call it camera target but you really can call it its name ag agnostic you can call it anything you want and let's drag it in to the target slot so our camera will now follow that camera target <clears throat> so let's hit play and test and see if everything's working as it should alright and as we can see when I'm dragging this we see the camera following behind um, the player smoothly up and down up and down smoothly and because we assigned rotations it also dampens and smoothly damps around the um, the rotation as well um, if you couldn't tell already this script this player camera script will work with a lot of different things your third person character games um, not just a space shooter so it's very versatile um, you can also go in here and uh, if you want it to damp even more lower the value um, so a lower value will allow it to be even smoother um, so it's even slower and catches up even slower um, if you want it to be uh, follow it really tight then increase the value and it'll damp less All right. depends on your gameplay if you want really fast crazy intense gameplay probably tighten those values up so with that done one of the things we like to do here is since the player camera is only in this scene if something were to happen to this scene or it would delete it out of it we would actually lose the prefab for that camera we won't lose the script but the prefab so let's create a folder and call it prefabs and then we'll left mouse drag it in there and we have it so this way if it gets deleted or something like that we just drag it back in and then assign your camera target back to it Okay. That way it's a prefab. So in the next video, we're going to cover really quickly in a 20 minute or less video on how to create a three dimensional infinite star field around the player. So they get a real sense of speed and that they're in um, a 3D space, like they're actually traveling through a galaxy or something like that. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys in video two. Thank you for watching.